Hey everybody, my name is Susie Tiggs. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm here to talk about bridging that gap between pre-service and master depth educator. We know that as deaf educators, there's so much we need to learn. We need to know all of the deaf ed stuff, plus all the special ed stuff, plus all the gen ed stuff. If another educator needs to know it, regardless of their field, we need to know it as well which is a little overwhelming when you think, how are we supposed to learn all this? Well, of course, we've gone to college, so we've got plenty of time during that pre-service time to learn all of it if we go 15, 20 years of school. Or we sit through so much PD, surely we're gonna get it all through that PD. If we sit 4,000 of hours of PD sessions learning it. Sometimes it feels like that's what we do. Maybe osmosis, that may be the best way to learn it all. It's gonna take a lot less time. The reality is pre-service plus in-service plus osmosis still isn't going to get us everything that we need to get to that level that we really want to be at as master educators. And since osmosis just isn't possible yet, we really need to take that out of the equation. That gap is wide, but that's not a problem. We've got a way around that. So let's talk about do-it-yourself personalized professional development. My principal comes to me and he says, on Monday, I need you to go to this training. I know it's not appropriate for me, but I don't have a choice. Principal says, I go, I go. But the principal can't tell me that I'm not allowed to learn outside of that the professional development that he's providing for me. I can be in control of my own learning and I can learn what I need to learn to be the best teacher I can and to meet the needs of my students. Coming up with seven different things to consider as we break down that uh, personalized professional development. Let's go through each of them real quickly and kind of talk about what that may look like. We've already said that there's tons of stuff that we need to know. I can't just say, I need to know it all because I'm gonna be a better teacher. I need to learn all of it. That's not gonna get me very far. So first I need to choose a topic. I need to narrow it down. What of these things, the many things that are on here do I need to learn? And I've decided that I'm going to start with hearing assistive technology. But even hearing assistive technology is a really large piece. So from there, I can do some self-assessment, narrow down what particularly are the skills that I need to be looking at. So I decided after the self-assessment, I need to focus on FM and DM. This is a form that we created that just kind of helps walk through each of the pieces. We've decided the knowledge or skills that we're gonna focus on. That would be the hearing assistive technology, FM and DM systems. But then we have to create a SMART goal. We create goals for our students for their IEPs, their goals and objectives to help understand and to recognize when they've mastered it, why wouldn't we do the same for ourselves? So I think of this form here as my own personal IEP. From there, we need to look about choosing the learning. We don't all learn the same way. We may all have to sit in the same personal, in the same professional development offered by our district, but if we're personalizing it, we can choose how we wanna learn. It's important though, what, that we pick something that's collaborative as well as something that's independent. I like watching a YouTube video, five minutes, three minutes. I pick up so much more of that than from long things. So that's what I'm gonna do but I'm also gonna have conversations with other teachers with the FONAC rep, learn more about DM. An important thing throughout the entire process is reflection. Thinking about what I have chosen, is it really gonna meet the needs of my learning, of my students? What differences do I need to make? And as I begin to implement my learning and is it making a difference in what I'm doing? Looking at artifacts in Texas, we have a, um, an educator system that's an evaluation system. I'm sure most states have something similar. At the 
beginning of the year, we set our learning goals. And at the end of the year, we have to show documentation to prove that we've met them. Creating artifacts to document our learning is a great way to work on the reflection piece, as well as to create that documentation to be able to use at your end of the year meeting. And as you do all of this, thinking about the plan itself and evaluating it, is it relevant? Are the goals and objectives really, is the plan meeting our needs? Um, are the goals clear? Is there anything that is on here just to take time, but not necessarily that's applicable? So it's important that we evaluate that plan. And as we implement the plan, we can keep coming back and evaluate through the entire cycle just to see if anything's changed. One of the most important things that I feel like is just essential in everything I do is that reflection. I love John, John Dewey's quote, we don't learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. And that is so true. Peter Pappas created a taxonomy of reflection. He's got one for students, teachers and administrators. And he's taken the levels of Bloom taxonomy and he's divided them looking at it from a reflective level. So remembering what did I do all the way up to that evaluating and the creating level. So all of the resources that um, for everything that we talked about, the form, some additional things that might help are in a live binder. You can locate those at bit.ly slash PPD planning. Here's a, a um, QR code. This information will be in the app as well. And one of my favorite quotes that really kind of epitomizes all of this, it is what we know already that often prevents us from learning. So very true. So thank you for sitting through eight minutes. My name is Susie Tiggs and please contact me if you've got any questions. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.